Yes, we're back. We're back again. Taylor friend. <laughs> Look who's back. <laughs> um, no. But yeah, this is uh, yet another podcast. Episode 44. Yeah. As far as I know, who's keeping count? Oh, baby, I, I wanted you to be Inside my arms Where the night goes down Hey guys, so welcome back to the podcast, episode 44. Got a few stories to tell you from the week. Good and bad, crazy stories um, that, yeah, I wouldn't have imagined before this week. Like, it's crazy. And, uh, yeah, for once, I'm not going to moan all about COVID and the, the restrictions. I might at some point, but not just yet. I've got a few stories to tell you guys. But, um, yeah, first of all, how are you doing? Hopefully you're doing fine. If there's background noise, I'm sorry. My brother's trying to make lunch in the kitchen. Or someone is, I don't know. There's always noise around there. Um, so, yeah, apologies for that if you get disturbed by any extra sound. that You might not even hear, it might just be me being paranoid. Um, but, yeah, I haven't made as many videos recently as I wanted to. So it's difficult, um, like, if one, one of my parents, they've been home for a bit because they've been, like, ill, so, not corona, don't worry, but you know, when one of your parents is at home, it's like, you're le- less opportunities to take the time to make videos, and my brother's always in and out and up and down, but he will be back to work soon, provided the country doesn't go on lockdown, which it pretty much already is. But yes, I've got a few stories from Monday night and then Tuesday as well. Um, yeah, I mean, both ends of the spectrum, but in both situations, two of the situations, um, it's someone taking advantage of good nature that people have. We all have it. We all have that good nature towards those less fortunate or those posing to be less fortunate or with like a, a genuine... Uh, something genuine you know not everyone's genuine in that opinion in that uh in this in these situations they want to take advantage of you you know give them an arm they'll take the rest of you i don't know what the phrase is give them a hand they'll take your arm something like that anyway uh let's roll on with this podcast so yeah first up is monday night this isn't to do with these two stories but monday night i went out with my cousins for the usual meal we have once a week because we can't really have them around the house because uh, of them being at work and stuff. So a social distance meal at a restaurant is the best we can manage. So we do that, we get there, we pick up my younger cousin and then we wait there for my older cousin who rides a bike um, and he turns up finally in his high-vis yellow jacket. So he looks like a delivery driver. So we're just assuming that the, they're going to think he works there or he's coming to pick up a pizza you know uh, but no he gets to the door and the door is one of those doors where you have to pull it to come in but what does he do he pushes it and smashes into the door as he's trying to get in which is so embarrassing for him he's playing the office call and everything and we're just at the table cracking up um, he's probably seen the waitress and that's made him more like nervous trying to appear cool and, and calm and collected but no, nah, the opposite happened, and she's trying not to to laugh under a mask, and it's just ridiculous. And we're cracking up for the next half an hour because the way he played it off is like nothing. So every week we catch up, and it's like a tradition now. Um, my other co- my cousin's mate who came over with them as well, with him as well. Um, he finally has a job, so that's good. So there's three of them. They're sharing an apartment. Good for them. Finally, my older cousin gets somewhere to call his own because he's been renting in other places in people's houses before that. So it's a step up. So it's good for them. So we get to meet up with them a lot when we can when they're all not working. So that's good. And 
that wasn't the end of the, the, the craziness that evening. So me and my brother, we're driving home. Um, so the main road that you use to turn into our road, there's a, there's a guy flagging us down, waving a bunch of flowers in his arm, in his hand, like, at the top of our road. And like he kind of starts, you see him sprinting down the road a bit. So then we go, okay, let's do it. Let's go around the block. So we go around the block and we see him going up to other people on the high road. And then obviously he followed our van as we turned in, didn't he? And he follows us all the way down the road. As we're getting out of the car, well, I'm still in the car, my brother's like on getting out his side. And the guy's at the end of our driveway just saying, look, excuse me, I dropped my wallet. I, I need f- three quid uh, to get on the bus ride home. If you give me three quid, I'll give you these flowers. Like, it's the old, I've lost my wallet trick. Like, obviously he's not lost his wallet. He's just asking for a bit of money. He wants to see where you keep your wallet and then nick it. I guess. Um, so, yeah, we say, yeah, walk on. Jog on all this. I like, get out of here. Uh, before we, you know, we'll sort you out. We'll, we'll uh, do something. If you know what I mean. So, yeah, he, he walks off eventually. Effing and, blo- effing and swearing and, like, calling us all sorts of names. Like, I'm not a criminal, all this. I mean, you're not, but you're clearly, like, disturbing people, annoying people. And so, one of our neighbours, not our neighbour, but, like, the one next to our neighbour, uh, he, he was in his car the whole time he saw the whole thing. So he gets out, he's like, what's that all about? He's like, we don't know, some random guy asking for money. So then he starts chasing him down the street, swearing at him, saying, stay out of our street. Um, you know, mind your own business, all this. And he's running down the seats, street, shouting all sorts of abuse at him. And so this guy just like, obviously got scared and ran off. But it was quite funny for a minute. Like there was a fight on the break on the start. And while well, I said to my brother, just like, because I have a ramp in the car that I use to get up steps when I, whenever I go to restaurants that might not have ramps. So I said, just grab the ramp and hit him with it, you know. Or just get it in your arm and just say, look, I'm going to hit you with this if you don't bugger off. And then the same guy the next day, we see him running, running down the street in the middle of the night, looking for people to ask for money. And then the day after, he's approaching all the mothers with their kids coming out of school. I mean, normally it's weird anyway and it's annoying. But with COVID around, like, we don't, why are you coming near me? Like personal space. And lucky he kept his distance. Otherwise, we would have sorted him, sorted him right out. You know what I mean? Like, goodbye. Like, in America, this stuff don't happen. Because you just whip out your gun. You know, like, get off my property, you know. Luckily, he didn't take a step forward. Otherwise, there would have been serious trouble. But that was just so funny. And it's not like this guy's any harm. But you worry for him. Like, someone that doesn't want to be annoyed in that way we'll take it a step further and beat him up and he might get stabbed or you know you don't know what he's got in him you don't know so like it's a bit it's a bit of a dodgy situation you don't know quite how to act because you know it's a trick you know for sure there's some sort of foul play here and because who's going to have a bunch of flowers to sell at that time of night who's going to come to to your doorstep and try and do that like we keep seeing him around my brother saw him further down the high road the other day, so he's like the local weirdo. We've all got one. There's all a, every town, every area has a local weirdo, and this is ours now. We're calling him the flower guy now, just because he had some flower. Well, maybe they weren't. Maybe he just got a bag, stuffed some leaves in it, and made it look like a bunch of flowers. It's easily done. Or he just nicked them off someone's rose bush. You never know. But so that was the craziness of Monday night. That was just the average Monday night. Uh, I mean, if I see him again, like, nah. Like, if he was um, anywhere n- nearer to our doorstep, our camera on the our ring camera would have picked him up. I think it did, like, kind of, but from where he was, it was like behind our van. So you couldn't really see on the camera. Um, but yeah, like you find the police and what they're going to do is he hasn't done anything wrong. He's not really a danger, he's just annoying. And it's like, you're going up to mothers with their kids, that's just, 
like intimidating for them because they don't know what your intentions are yeah you want money but people are going to whip out their wallet and say yeah here you go I mean nowadays who carries cash or that much much cash like it's all card and Apple Pay or Google Pay or whatever so really I don't know what he's what he's on like you know I don't know there is dodgy people out there that do prey on your good nature he's hoping someone will feel sorry for him um, and just give him some money but not not us so anyway another story someone I know I can't say who someone like close to us or in our family um, I'm not going to say who just because you're a bunch of nosy buggers no I'm joking <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, so someone I know had their phone stolen. Um, so that's just, that's more serious. A lot as like betrayal, man. Like you feel like abuse, like someone's come in your house and like gone through your underwear drawer. It's not so much the items, it's more the, the hassle, you know? Got to get a new phone, all this. Like, and a few shops have picked the guy up on camera they kind of know which way he went. We don't know what he did with the phone after that. Like, Maybe he's got some sort of software where he can wipe all the data and just start afresh with the phone and then sell it or hopefully not like using the the the, the phone num- like using the phone like, and using all the, the details that might be on there all the personal stuff for fraud or something. Because phones are our lives. And that's what this taught me, like, you lose your phone, you lose a lot. A lot of things, like Apple Pay, if you've got that, um, all these things, your email, you know. We all use it for, it's all for our phones, social media, so you can tell a lot about someone from their phone. So it's got me thinking, like, that's like a terrible feeling. It's not nice. Yeah, the next, the thing next to that is even worse, could be a burglary, but yeah. Having your phone taken in that way, nah. It's it's not pleasant. And it's just frustrating. If you ever had your phone stolen in any way or lost, like it's just the ultimate stress. Insurance or no insurance. Like who insures their phone? Like I I was gonna insure my phone when I got it, but it would have been like ten extra quid a month on top of what I'm paying for the phone. So it's like nah, you can leave that. It's not worth it. I mean, I'm I'm pretty careful with my phone anyway. But you never know what's going to happen. And these people that take advantage of you. Like, you know. You can't be too careful. But, I mean, if this... No, this sort of thing... It doesn't happen, like, often. But it happens. Like, I've heard of people having... Of people we know having their, like... Their bags, Nick, like women in supermarkets. Even my grandma once in the supermarket was robbed by like another woman. Like pickpocketed. Not robbed. Not, not like people go to give me your stuff. Nah. Well, it was more of a pickpocket situation. So when this happens to people, it's not it's not enjoyable at all. And like my grandma, when she it was her wallet, her purse, it had pictures of like us lot in them. Like picture and they have a lot of value to people in it family pictures and stuff that you've got someone else looking at that they probably don't care about just throwing them away you know so it's like the the mental side of it more than the actual items sometimes you know they steal your car you've got insurance they give you a new car simple but still that someone took advantage of you in that way it's not nice like and then it's easy to blame yourself. A lot of people do, but you shouldn't. Because you're not the one in the wrong doing the, doing the bad deed. Like, you're just living your life. So yeah, that's really the theme of the podcast. Um, so yeah, we had a laugh Monday, then hear about this Tuesday, and it's like, annoying to hear about. Like, who is this guy? If I find him, I'll beat him up, you know? That kind of thing's going through your head. Um, but then, yeah. You don't know. You don't, you don't know how genuine people are, if they are at all. You've got to be able to read people, that's hard. 
Which for some people anyway. I mean, don't fall into that trap in life, that's what I'm saying. People that are there just to use you or take advantage in some way. Not just talking about theft, but like in general, there are people who want to be your friend because it, it's their gain in some way. Like, that's what you hear about in Hollywood, in those kind of industries. But we're talking about real life. It happens in real life too. People are only your friends for a certain reason. Um, so yeah, you can't really... It affects your trust when things like this happen. Like you might not trust some, the next guy who comes along who maybe is genuine. So it's difficult to say. And yeah, maybe I haven't given you all the details on the story but you know where I'm coming from and how annoying it can be if it's ever happened to you a mugging is even worse like because there's like intimidation involved there and like a threat of 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 harm of your life in some ways and now I've never been in that situation like you because you always think like oh it never happened to me I always think like oh yeah who's gonna rob a, a disabled person but in some cases, think about it. Someone might that desperate might be more likely to, or might not even care who they're robbing. Because would you really in that situation? I don't know. Depending, but still, like I always think, like nah, won't happen to me. Just get some bodyguards in, it's fine. But uh, it can happen to anyone. Uh, it's like when you think, oh, it never happened to me until it does you know so it's the world we live in and maybe this year has brought out the worst in some people and the best in others it definitely has and if you're a thief like if, it, if you're a burglar or someone that robs stuff for a living like you didn't go on furlough did you like cause, just because everyone was on lockdown and everyone was on furlough like burglars don't get furlough so they got to still work so now they're more desperate to steal things and take advantage of people in this way. And it's not the first time that a similar thing has happened. So all I say is watch out for guys with clipboards posing as salesmen because they will trick the hell out of you. And like in this situation, that's what it was. So it's normally, that's what's normally the case. Like the guy posing to be a salesman, chatting some rubbish, and while they're distracting you with their presence, their clipboard will be over your phone and then they'll leave with the clipboard, pick up the clipboard and your phone's underneath and you can't see. And it's gone. And goodbye. And you won't even realise straight away. Sneaky. Bastard, basically. Like, if that's what you do with your life, like, anyone, anyone who, I don't know, this guy, like, you wish bad things, but, like, it's harsh, but yeah, you wish bad things on these kind of people because, I mean, revenge is like something that, like, if you believe in karma or you believe in God, either way, something's gonna befall this person, like, something negative anyway, because, you know, karma, karma's a bitch. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, so you just gotta, well, that person's gonna have some, something bad to happen for sure. You don't wish that, but in these situations, if you're bringing harm to someone I know, nah, no thank you. Like if I, if I see you around, nah, goodbye. <laughs> but yeah, that's my take on it anyway. Um, could be a bit harsh, maybe not harsh enough, but as long as we, you report it to the police, you know, or whoever it is, and you know, with phones, just phone your phone company. They can sort you out. Because it's just like, especially when you've got all these high tech iPhones, they're worth money. You nick them, you can sell that for a fair bit of cash. If you think from that point of view. I, like I said, I've said a few times, I've been trying to use my phone a lot less. It's become part of my routine to use it less. Like, I'm not even thinking about it now. Uh, I find myself not on Instagram or Twitter or any of that a lot apart from to share my content with you guys, of course, so, and, and to check what my friends and family are up to, some of them. Anyway, the people I care about, 
The rest is like, nah. <laughs> no offence. Um, but if... If you know what I mean, it's... Um, it's a drain on your emotions to be on there too long. It just gets you down, it gets me down. Um, or it gets me pissed off. It just... Not jealous, but like... You know what I mean? Like, you see people like in their fake happiness, like, yay! Look at me. Here's photos of me like six months ago on holiday somewhere. But I, I don't have that because I haven't been on holiday for a year. Because of bloody Covid. <laughs> but I thought that would annoy me more than it has. To be honest, it hasn't annoyed me that much. At the time when we had to cancel a holiday, we were like, nah. This is messed up. I'm so pissed off. It's ruined my whole year. But how can you let one holiday do that? You've got to live for the moment, not for like one holiday. Two weeks of the year. I mean, a lot of people are lucky. Certain people manage to go get away when the rules eased in like August, July time. Before it went downhill, basically. And I heard of one case, there was a kid who, um, him and his mate, they went to, I think, Italy somewhere in August. And then they had to quarantine on the way back. Well, they couldn't leave, basically. So they didn't even make their way back because they were stuck in quarantine, self-isolation in Italy for over eight weeks for some reason. Um, because I don't know what happened in that situation. Obviously they were over it, but I don't know why they were kept for so long. But they were just go. They were just really up. The parents were really upset. And then when they were, the kid finally got to come home, he was so happy and all this and relieved and all this. But like, what's your fault? You went on holiday and maybe didn't take the proper precautions during a pandemic um, not, nothing against people going on holiday in the pandemic um, in some cases if you're careful but obviously they weren't they got COVID and they had to self-isolate and quarantine in a foreign country and they're upset about it as if like they didn't expect that to happen like what do you expect I'm going to get irate about this but like what do you expect you naive kids like come on like people sacrificing their holidays here like um, yeah, for the normal person, like, maybe wearing a mask is annoying, but you're doing it for people like me, for your, your grandparents. You know, you're, you're thinking of them, those that are more at risk, because the average person can survive it and then get on with their lives. It'd just be two weeks at home, and what's that going to do after three months? So some people really don't, don't have the need to care, and apparently um, the masks are actually... Well, it's proven that they work. But someone was saying, like, oh, the fibres inside the masks can get in your lungs and give you lung cancer and all this. I was like, well, I don't think so. No, I mean, I heard this on another podcast. I was like, okay, I don't think so. I think the masks do help. Like, however uncomfortable... Yeah, they're uncomfortable. They're annoying. But do you care about your at-risk loved ones? Because we've got them. You know, I mean, people are not feeling it, like, necessarily... Others, like in my case, I'm shielding still, you know. I've been shielding all year now. It's nothing new. Yeah, it gets to me, it gets annoying, but... Um, you know, FIFA 21 is here, so who cares? But now on a serious note, like... There's people that are just taking a mick, like... Moaning about their situation when... There's people that have been shielding, like, the whole time. And half the time you've got to go out. And I'm lucky, because I, I still go out... A certain amount, you know. I was out with my cousins on Monday, it's like once a week at the moment, which is weird, but it's what I'm, I'm doing at the moment to get by. It's all you can do before we get even further lockdowns. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to wish the worst, but, you know, it can happen. And uh, it'd be naive, naive to think it's all going to go away overnight. The longer it goes on, the more people say, oh, obviously it's right, but, you know, I, I don't know. For people to say, like, oh, it'll be over soon, I, I hope it's over soon, well, we've been saying that for, like, how many months? Oh, it'll be over soon. The longer it goes on, obviously, the nearer to the end of it you get. But at the same time, it's gone on a lot longer than people thought. So maybe it'll go on even longer than what we're thinking now. It'll be with us for a long time, this virus. And we'll be adapting, because the human race has adapted many times. Animals adapt in nature. They don't get to a hurdle and stop. You've got to adapt to it and move on. And fight against it, you know. It's not about just oh, it's gonna go one day we're back to normal. No, we've got to adapt with it. There'll be no, there'll be a different normal to the normal we're used to. 
or the normal we had in 2019 or before that post covid you know post covid it would be different to pre covid i mean you know pre covid before this you know it was different it won't be the same again but some things have changed for the better like everyone's washing their hands and that'll carry on covid or no covid but my point is we can't just see it as it's going to stop one day and go away and that's it no it'll always be there to some extent and this brightness is pissing me off actually it is too dark man you got to adapt adaptability that's what it is to be human i guess well, that's what it should be like any any animal in the animal kingdom you know you get a, a challenge you deal with it and no yeah honestly what a mask is considering others yeah maybe you, some people will be like i've had it it's not that bad others would be like i've had it i understand why this is bad let me take extra precautions and protect those around me because i know because i've been through you know someone who's had it might know that someone who hasn't had it might not be so understanding you know um because like an average person they might get it because they're still working because they're not shielding or whatever well, obviously not but I'm shielding so I don't worry in that sense but you worry about other people around you for sure someone you know like in your household because it will mess up the whole routine you got going on you know one of my parents if they were to it'd be like ruin their business and it would like be difficult to get around the house to be in my own house just to stay in my room or they'd have to stay in their room you know obviously but we'd adapt you know we'd get around it but yeah shielding is what it is really um people were like oh well maybe it doesn't get out much anyway you know from from a, a cynical point of view you know they're like oh young people they want to go out and enjoy themselves because you know you only live once yolo all this i mean i want to do the same yeah i'm shielding i'm not enjoying shielding i'm not here for fun i'm here because i want to not get corona is it any more straightforward than that but i just want to party as much as anyone else to be honest I want to go to the pub want to do it for my mates more more than anything but the risk is there you know and the rules are the rules yeah i'm i'm all for breaking the rules but i don't wanna, i don't want to get ill that's what i'm saying and as much as i want to go out and do with this this oh my god Who's finding me? But yeah, I mean, it makes you think like people are taking it for granted. They're still getting to go out to a certain extent, go around their mate's house and stuff. I, I can't really do that. Um, not necessarily because of the rules, because I'm aware of how dangerous this can be and how easily spreadable it is. And I care about myself, obviously. Don't we all? isn't that you got to put yourself first i care about those around me too and they don't want to put me at risk you know and then so young, all us young people were getting a bad rap like oh it's the young people that will spread it this and that so then people elderly people and other people are crossing the street when they see young people in the street oh my days oh i think i know who it is stop phoning me if you know who you are well, this isn't live, so yeah, I'm gonna mute my phone, guys, because that's gonna get copyright. Jesus, it's like two people trying to FaceTime me. I don't know what's going on here, guys. I'm a popular fella. See, they want to meet up. Everyone wants to meet up with me, but I can't. I can't, guys. You know, I'm the first person to admit I really want to go out. But you've got to take it slow with this virus. It's not like I'm not going out at all. But like from a cynical point of view, the average per able-bodied young person might not think, oh, maybe, maybe disabled people want to go out too. But they can't. At least we can, you know? Think of it that way. <laughs> but that's cynical of me to say that, really. Because we've all got someone we know that's at risk. But yeah, I mean, you can't just blame it on young people, like... Yeah, we're going out and what we're going around, but and maybe some people aren't as careful because you know if they get it, it won't be that bad. But 
to just give, give a bad rap to young people is wrong. Because now on the street, people are crossing the street. It's like crossing the street if you see a hooded person thinking they're going to mug you. Like, that's stereotypical. Because maybe they just got their hood up for some reason. Maybe it's raining, you know? It's, well, everyone would have their hood up if it's raining. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. But you know, you can't judge a book by the front cover. So, they're blaming all young people. Like, a lot of young people have people they know that are at risk. So they have to be careful too. When they've got mates that maybe don't have the same situation. So it's it's difficult to put everyone in one basket. And you shouldn't. And the news seems to be doing that. You know, I mean... Fair enough. Everyone's going through something, but... I'm, surely me shielding being here is worse than people who still have some level of, like... Freedom, I don't know. And everyone's all... Well, everyone's got their own situation they're dealing with, but... Trust me, anyone shielding in my position knows. we just seen other people have, like, somewhere near to the normal level of fun. And we're not even having that, kind of. Yeah, Zoom calls, you know. Quizzes with my teammates, all that. It's great, but, you know... We just... Everyone wants to get back to normal. I'm not saying normal, but back to less lockdown rules and get rid of this 10pm 10, 10 rubbish. Which doesn't even make sense because we know everyone's pouring out the pub trying to get the bus with the tube at the same time. So it's kind of worse. So maybe the government caused their own problems. I mean, if the UK was an aeroplane, we'd be going down, hurtling at 100 miles an hour towards the sea or ground at full speed because Boris is in charge and Boris is the pilot and he's driving this plane into the ground that's all I can say about that I mean but if you're a young person and you think like oh this is going to ruin my life like don't think like that that's harsh I mean it'll just make things more difficult but through adversity you know comes growth and like you get a better you become a better person be better for it than previous generations because you've got such a tough thing to deal with and a lot a lot of young people think like this will affect their entire future but it won't it won't affect your entire future it's affecting the now and it'll make it difficult but it won't you know literally harm your future it won't end your future or whatever career you want and, and you know, the government are like, oh, yeah, we need jobs in this sector, this sector. Now, the only jobs you can get, really, for now, are probably Deliveroo or Amazon. But I see how young people feel like that. I can see where you're coming from as a student, something you can't even go to uni normally, and live your life at uni that's this thing you anticip that's anticipated and people look forward to in their lives. And they can't do it as normal, so I feel for them. Of course, but, like, it's not the end for your career or whatever career you're studying to do. You've got, if you're in lockdown, you've got more time to study different aspects of the same thing, not just your curriculum, which sometimes is BS. Like, like I mean, yeah, I did journalism, I learned so much, but some stuff I could do without some of the stuff they put in my brain, some of the things I was forced to learn, like, no. Not forced, but like, that you needed to to pass certain exams and stuff. But here we are, I mean, I think about it now, I was a student, what, five years ago? It's quite a long time. Things may have changed. So yeah, there's different sides to the argument. But yeah, if you're a young person, don't feel that way because it's just gonna make it worse if you don't believe that, uh, uh, you know, your future is gonna be what you, you thought it was before COVID. I mean, when you want to achieve something, you've got to believe it. That's it. Um, maybe someone else said that, but... Like, confidence and... You know, not cockiness, but confidence and belief that you can do something. Because if you don't believe in it, you're never actually going to get there and attain what you're you're working towards. I mean, I was re recently watching the Eddie Hall documentary, The Weightlifter, The World's Strongest Man and the effort and the work he put into it. But he was he believed he could 
the world's strongest man ever bef- long before he did it he believed he could he's like I'm going to do that I'm going to be that I'm going to work towards that even if it kills me you know I'm going to get there or die trying that was his belief the obsession was real when he got there if you really want something you're going to get it if you believe you can you will you know you feel like ah I'm not I wasn't that good anyway well that's that, that that's your loss like the kids that become footballers and the kids that don't and turn out you know they're working at McDonald's or the I don't know, or maybe they could become lawyers or something but you know the kids that don't quite become footballers is because they don't believe that they will be a pro footballer and if you don't believe you're not going to put an effort into something you don't believe in fully and then sometimes it's just okay it might be bad luck might get an injury or something yeah that's different but if you believe you're going to fight for anything to get to your goal and no virus is going to stop that or get in the way of that uh, if you think that's that's going to stop you then well you're wrong it shouldn't it shouldn't hold you back it should like motivate you more if anything and I've been still making videos I haven't stopped because of no virus it's been more difficult to go out and stuff but I'm finding a way if not through videos but through podcasts and here we are on the podcast 44 of these I've done now when I started I never thought we'd be in a pandemic and I'd be podcasting about it and thought it'd be this kind of pandemic you know I mean there were people that foresaw this kind of pandemic but not not the average person so who would, who would have thought and yeah some podcasts I do a bit that are a bit more personal and some are a bit more political and about things going on around and a lot's been going on the last year and so been a lot to talk about it's not like there's not been things to talk about there's always something going on in my life if not the rest of the world and the first few podcasts you know I really believed I, w- I would be doing this on a professional level you know and I still believe that I believe someone's going to see it and it's going to go to another level And but I'm, I enjoy it now regardless but I believe that there can be something more. That's why I keep making them. If I didn't believe, I would have stopped after three or four. It'd be like that. And most podcasts, well, maybe, may, I don't know. They're talking about po- podcasts that, like, like proper podcasts. I mean, what am I saying? This is a proper podcast, but certain podcasts don't make it past episode seven. And I've, I've, I'm long past episode seven. And I'm still going because it's me making it, you know. Um, it's no one else; it's pure. And I, I believe that it's going to take it a step further if I just keep doing it because repetition is what what makes you good at something. If you keep doing it, keep practicing, keep using that skill day after day, you'll get better. Whatever it is, like a football player that's sitting on the bench compared to one that's playing every week. One that's playing every week will be sharper fit up and, and better on the ball in all sense of the word because they've been doing it more you know it's the experience that's why older players have something that younger players don't have in in, in that kind of realm of like experience and know how of how to get through a situation or skill in some cases and maybe physically they can't put it, put it together like or, or do what they, they the idea they have in their head like put it to practice but they can teach others and stuff you know I don't know if it's a good analogy but you know, the more you do something the better you get at it so the more I'm doing this the better I'm getting no matter what and I'm watching back from my old ones learning from them even taking that and learning to what learning how to add that into what I do now and getting new ideas on how to present the podcast I just get my point across and how to research things which I knew anyway from uni I had a lot of help there and that gave me the, the basis for this and here we are 44 podcasts 44 I get a bit North London sometimes I jump between that and being well spoken it varies it depends who I'm talking to but yeah I'm going to go and 
play FIFA. And I'm going to leave you guys. Um, just remember, like, don't let people take advantage of you too much. Or, you know, take too much. When you're not, you know, you give a little, they take a lot. That kind of thing happens a lot in life, in a lot of situations. So just be weary, but um, don't forget humility. Uh, you know, be humble where you can. And there is good people out there. They're not all bad, they're not all burglars or thieves or scumbags. But some of them are. Just know how... It's not always easy, but know how to differentiate between the two because I don't want you feeling the same way that I've been explaining about these people that take advantage, you know. That are out to get you, basically. Not necessarily always hurt you, but take what you've got because they want what you've got in some way. And, yeah, just... If it does happen, learn from it. Learn and take precautions. But, of course, don't blame yourself if it does happen. Because it can happen once, twice, three times. Some people are just unlucky that way. Um, but, yeah. Take it easy, guys. Be careful out there. Stay up, stay humble. Protect those you care about wearing masks. You know, social distance. Where you can. And that's a clear instruction. The government can't give those, so if you want them, just come here instead. It's better than watching the news, to be honest. It's all lies. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. But yeah, stay up, stay humble, guys. Keep it real, as always. That is it from me. Peace. <laughs>